Good evening. Uh, it is currently Wednesday evening, and uh, Wednesday is the day after our, our weekly uh, game, our in-person game. And so I thought it would be worthwhile to give everyone an update as to how it's going. And I'm not sure what to title this because I, I had kind of highs and lows. Um, the high point was, uh, and this is, again, if you're joining me, why am I making these videos? I'm making these videos because I want to explore the question is whether or not you can turn someone who's become kind of a standard player into someone that's uh, focused on role play and immersion. And uh, and what I'm doing to, to test this out to see if I can make this change and uh, hopefully bring others along for the change is that I'm trying out new things. I'm, I'm trying to um, break habits, uh, become more adept at, at uh, staying in character and not breaking that immersion, but just staying with it. So I, I'll start with the, uh, the things that went well and kind of the, the high point would have to be that about an hour or two before we were scheduled to begin play, uh, one of my longest term players, actually the player um, that I thought would be the most resistant to any change in the style of play called me uh, out of the blue and just uh, thanked me. He said, this has been what he, his term was, it's been, it's, it feels liberating to not, to be focused more on the character itself. I, he um, used to be, I would say he came in uh, back into the hobby really as more of a power gamer, uh, a min maxer in the 3.5, uh, D&D 3.5 era. Uh, very good at at making powerful combinations using the rule set. Um, he's he's quite tactically minded, so the uh, the battle grid was everything. Um, very good at you know strategy strategy, excuse me. Um, and yeah, he called and just said, "Look, this has been just such a change," and and he's loved the change. He said, "This is great. I just think it's fantastic. I'm no longer focused on just." kill the thing so that I can get the experience so that I can get the new combo. I unlock the new power up. And he's like, it doesn't feel like that at all anymore. It's more what's going on with this character. How, how am I playing this character such that it's uh, it's believable in the world, if that makes sense. And I thought it was great. We had a good conversation. I was like, wow, I was so surprised because I, I honestly did think that he would be, if there were going to be any casualties in this change, then he was the most likely candidate to uh, to drop off, and I didn't want that to happen. So I was I, I came into it kind of at a high, and then just everything seemed to transpire against me and and us in general, and it it was a bit of a hot mess. Uh, I'll explain what I mean by that. First of all, it, it's it is a little jarring when when people come in late and. Uh, life happens, and I'm not one that's going to lock the door and know you can't come in. Of course, I understand that people have other things going on, and and sometimes uh, you just can't be there quite on time. It just happens. Uh, so that puts you a little. It puts me a little on my back foot. Like I'm not. Uh, I'm. You have to build up the momentum. I find at, at least me when I'm running a game or I'm I'm painting the picture and trying to get everyone into the scene. So. What I mean by that is it, it's help, I find it helpful the last few weeks to remind everyone, okay, we're thinking cinematically. We're, we're in character. Please don't ask any out-of-character questions to me. Stay in character. If you interact with each other, stay in character. Um, and do as best you can. And We're not going to let uh, you know, the seeking for perfection be the enemy of good. We're going to, we're going to try and we're new at this and we're going to, we'll eventually get there. Um, but because people came in at different times and not everyone kind of got that spiel and I wasn't very good at, uh, uh, emphasizing that we're, this is what we're doing. So tonight I want you to really focus on this and, uh, you know, here's a, a very brief two sentence recap of what's happened. And then we're right into it. Um, so uh, it's partially on my players, partially on me. I think that if we're if we're if we have a goal to the setting, I'm, I think it's appropriate to have a goal. You know, we're trying we're we're always trying to improve and 
here's what we're trying to do. But if not, if everyone's not on board, then it's so easy to get derailed. And then it just, uh, we fall back into old habits. And then it, it, on my part, if I start answering kind of out of character uh, interactions with me, then they just multiply. Like if you answer, if I find that if I answer one, then that same player is going to ask me three more before I have a chance to go to the next player. It just, uh, and I don't, I'm not trying to pick on any particular player here. I'm just saying that consistency appears to be an essential characteristic. If we're going to stay immersed, then we, I have to be much more forceful on not answering it, just letting it go. Like I'm not, who are you talking to? Like what, who did you actually? And I understand that there's sometimes a need for greater description. There's sometimes a need to say, I didn't quite understand the scene here, uh, but uh, we're going to next week, we're going to work on the type of uh, interaction with me or the, or the world where you can still get that ad additional description without coming all the way out of character and then asking me, the, the guy in the cloud, to just answer this question, then this question, then this question. And then it just keeps going, and it, and it slows things down. Oh, it really slowed it down. That was one of the, that was really disappointing I, from my perspective, is just how slow the, that style of play is when it's everyone on their turn, they just, okay, here are the five questions I wanted to ask. And instead of just saying, here's where I am and here's what I'm doing. And, and anyway, so a little disheartening. Another thing too, and, and maybe this will be helpful to any, I don't know if any players have, are listening to this, but um, if you're a player and you want to retire a PC and you're just not having any fun with it, I would be surprised if you'll get a lot of pushback from uh, you're from game masters that would say, no, you, you must play that PC come hell or high water. There's no, there's no way you're, you're locked in. Uh, there's no way out. I, I would be surprised if you'll get that. You might get that. It's probably a sign of a terrible game master. I don't know. I don't know if that is or not. We're not trying to make a list here, but what I would caution against, if you know you're retiring a character, then that process of retiring your character so you can introduce a new one I, I think I I could be so bold as to speak for most game masters to say look you should give your game master a heads up on that not because I'm it's, and it's not because I'm, I'm going to somehow do some kind of plot thing or I'm trying to story tell everything it can still be spontaneous it can still be in player control but what I would not do is I would not spend 40 minutes with everyone at the table kind of confused as to why this player is or this particular character is acting so strange and and acting and just not like just complete I don't I don't know. So it, to me it felt like hey, if you wanted to just transition to a different, you know, character or what have you, um, just let me know and then we won't waste 40 minutes on it. Like we'll just say, look, this is this is it. and you know what this could be just something I don't. I don't think this. The player involved was trying to be malicious or trying to sabotage the session. I really don't. I think he's having a great time. Uh, but just out of courtesy for your other fellow players, um, you don't want to spend on a three-hour session. You don't want to spend forty minutes or so, half an hour even. I think is too much. If you already know that you're suiciding that character, or you're just they're just hitting the exit, just let them hit the exit. Just just say. You tell me in in advance. Say, well, this is what's happened, and in the weeks since we our last scene, so our last game, um, the the character has decided that he's just not into the adventuring side. It doesn't make sense. He wants to. He's he's got to, or he's had a change of heart, or whatever it is. That's fine. And then we just don't have to spend much time on it. So it, it felt a little. Um, yeah, it just felt like we had wasted quite a bit of time on it. If that makes sense. So don't, I would, and I don't have any hard feelings towards the player. This is uh, one of our, our, our newer, play, newest player, I would say, and uh, very enthusiastic, but it just, uh, you might want to give us, a, give me a heads up that 
you know, because I'm putting NPCs in your path and I'm, I'm you know, trying to make it the whole thing believable and, and you're just going to, you know, assault the sheriff and get, get shot down in the street by the posse um, that comes to, to enact justice. Well, could we not have done that just kind of off scene? Like, could that not have just been, anyway, uh, I, I, so that there's that. There were some good things. There was some, um, there were some, I'm not, I'm, I'm definitely not throwing my players under the bus. They are excellent for the most part. Um, we're, we're all on the same page. I think there's just, it's so bad habits become so ingrained that if you're not vigilant on it, and I think that's maybe the takeaway is that this is not going to be an, uh, this is not, uh, this experiment, this journey that we're on trying to be more immersive role players, regardless of the system you're playing, it's not a, a quick fix. It appears uh, the, uh, it's going to take time. It's going to take a lot of time. And I mean, I'm down. I, I still feel enthusiastic about it. I, I, you know, right after the game, I was like, Oh, what a hot mess that was. It was just a ridiculous, you know, I made all these mistakes and I should have been on the ball and, you know, I want to own everything that I can because I, I do want to take ownership of it. It's not that I'm the only guilty party if things go off the rail. It's just that, you know, I can, I can help steer it. I mean, I say off the rails and someone's going to be like, oh, you're railroading. No, 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 that's not what I mean. If we deviate from our goal of immersion ra- uh, role playing, uh, a lot of that falls on me to, to just, okay, no, I'm, you know, who are you talking to? You just asked me an out of character question. I'm, I'm sorry who are you speaking to? You're just talking to yourself in the room? Like what, what, what is that? Um, yeah, uh, we had a good, you know, you know, combat still is flowing much faster, uh, not missing an initiative at all, not missing it. It can just go away and players aren't missing it either. They, they're excited. Things go fast. Um, oh, that reminds me, speaking of, of kind of s- the setting or the system that we're using, I'm becoming more converted to the idea that the uh, there's a there's a dice probability problem with a d20 roll, um, and that and it, it just is, seems um, and I, I've, I've obviously biased by um, y- you YouTubers that have been so kind to me and I've watched your videos and I. I understand, I think I understand your arguments against using just a single D20 in a, a roll. Um, and I, I actually, after the game, I, I visited briefly with a couple of players. I said, you know, I think that the, we're having a bit of a, an issue with the D20. It's just so, the probability of, of a 1 versus a 20 versus any number, it's just a, it's completely random. It's the same probability for any number. And I can see the benefit of having a system where it's more of a bell curve. I, I do, I can, I'm starting to see that. I don't know, I'm not um, confident enough, I believe, at this point to make a, to make a house ruling on, on something as a core mechanic of the system. The D20 is, seems to be sacrosanct. You're not allowed to really come away from that. Everyone loves the D20, and I've certainly been guilty of that, uh, for sure. But... I don't know. I'm going to give that some more thought because I, I, if there was a way to quickly, um, you know, replace the D20 roll with something else that has more of a bell curve on it and uh, and not completely destroy all of the mechanics of the setting. Anyway, I'd, I'd love to hear your comments on that. I, I just think it's uh, it's something to to maybe consider um, for future for maybe future experimentation because we're we're I mean, and again, uh, kudos to my players and their being so long suffering when it comes to me uh, inflicting new things on them and trying things out. They they are willing. They certainly are willing. Um, but yeah, not a good session. I mean, it's not. It wasn't terrible. Uh, there was uh, there were there were some some bright spots. But as far as the the overall goal of immersion role play. No, kind of missed the mark, and and uh, it feels, yeah, like back to the high point. As I want to end this um, brief update uh, on the high point, more for myself than maybe for you. But the uh, the phone call that I got from my my longtime player, uh, 
he, in that conversation that we had, he said, I just can't see us ever going back. And that's something that's uh, been mentioned in some of the comments that you've been kind enough to leave on my videos, where once you, once you get that real immerse, immersion feel, it's, uh, there's no going back. You're, you're kind of spoiled. You, you, everything else just kind of feels flat. Um, to borrow kind of an analogy, the 3D versus 2D game. And yeah, and, and I think no one takes that harder uh, at the table than I do because I, I feel so passionately about it now. Um, yeah, so uh, I hope this is of some use to someone out there. If, you, if you're interested in making a change and being more focused on the role play, be prepared. There's going to be some setbacks. You're going to have sessions like I had last night where it just kind of felt like we were falling back into old ways and um, it just didn't have that kind of, wow, this was fantastic. Everything's firing on all cylinders and this, we're all on the same page. No, we're getting derailed over here. We're derailed over there. We're now we're soon, we're back to the, the same old, same old. And I remain dedicated to this, uh, this ongoing project because I do think it's the future of, of, uh, for, for me, at least it, I see this as the, the way forward to have, uh, longevity in the hobby. And that's what I really want because I do enjoy it so much. I hope that you've had, uh, you've been able to get something from my ramblings. Um, it's, uh, it's so good to have people, you know, follow along and give their feedback to what they've tried. And if you have something that you thought, well, you know, we tried this in order to, to, emphasize in character and emphasize role playing, please share it with me. And, and I'm open. I'm, I try to be as open as possible to trying out new things, to trying out different ways of doing it, uh, of playing that enhance immersion. Um, so yeah, please share them with me. And I, I appreciate you, those of you that have uh, chosen to subscribe and I'm shocked that there's so many of you and I'm grateful to have you here and hope that you'll join in the conversation. Thank you. Till next time.